Um, but this is our first live stream, and Lord willing, everything will begin to be ironed out as we learn to use the software and learn how to do the online stream. But what I wanted to sh talk with you first about is uh, we are using the YouTube streaming service uh, just because not everyone has Facebook. Uh, now, uh, because of the way things are, uh, doing it this way gives everyone in the church the ability, if they have an internet connection and connect to our website, you can view the stream. Uh, you should also be able to post uh, on the chat side. I do see uh, some chat coming in as well, and so that's awesome. And so um, this is new for all of us. Uh, it's a learning experience, and so I'm sure in the end it's going to be a blessing. Uh, thankfully, through the internet and through technology, we're able to connect online, even though we're not able to get out uh, and travel as freely as we used to in a way, uh, we're still able to connect online. And so uh, don't don't uh, mind me, I, I, I'm looking at notes and stuff like that, but I am uh, connected here. Uh, but just remember that uh, the, the easiest way to connect is through the website as of now. Eventually, uh, the videos will be put on the website so that you can view later on. Uh, and so this will be the way it will work. We'll also share it on the, on the Facebook Church's page as well. And so this will all work to stay connected. And so, uh, again, just thank you for joining us today. Uh, I know that many of you have many different options, many different sources to view, uh, but we're glad you've joined us uh, this evening. Uh, so, like I was saying a little bit earlier when the volume wasn't working, uh, we were doing a Bible study on the book of Proverbs, uh, but we're going to be doing, just for the next few sessions, uh, more of a devotional time together. Uh, the Lord placed upon my heart some reassuring words for everyone. And so we're hoping and praying that the Lord will truly bless you uh, through the word uh, this evening. Before we start, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we ask in Jesus' name for your blessing upon this online service. I pray for everyone that has joined us that they would truly be blessed. Those that will view it later on, we pray that ultimately the anointing of the Holy Spirit would be upon your word. And so bless, Lord, your word. Lord, I pray that you would anoint. I pray you'd bring life to your word, that it would impact every heart and every life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I wanted to share with you from the book of Luke. And so if you would like to turn to the book of Luke chapter 12, I want to share a portion from the story of Jesus. Uh, if anyone had comforting words for troubling times, it was Jesus. Uh, Jesus, uh, when he was here on the earth, was here on the earth during a time that was very troublesome. The Romans were then in power. The Romans were ruthless in their leadership, in the way that they ruled. Uh, the people in the land were overwhelmed with taxation and such. Uh, to have been living then would have been very troublesome. And in many ways, the time that we're in right now is troubling. But, you know, I think in many ways we've taken for granted the many, many blessings that we've enjoyed, enjoyed here in the United States. And with the spread of this virus uh, that's happening now in 2020 should bring us to the point of going back and assessing our lives and thinking about uh, maybe the many things we did take for granted, uh, the things that we are just wishing would be normal again. Uh, in many ways, it should give us a grateful heart and really appreciate when everything does normalize, uh, which we hope will be soon. It's our prayer. Uh, but in, in Luke chapter 12, Jesus begins to teach about the subject of anxiety. Anxiety uh, is the culmination of anxieties. It's the culmination of worry and fear. And during that time, there were many that were feeling anxious about what was going on then. And so Jesus uh, really began to bring them to the place of showing them who they are putting their trust in. And so I'm always reminded uh, of when I was a teacher at Summit International School of Ministry, as well as uh, formerly known as Mount Zion School of Ministry. Uh, one of my favorite times would be when I would go 
uh, into the classroom with the students. Uh, there were times when the students would be overwhelmed. Uh, sometimes, you know, they're just going through so many studies. It'd be a cold winter. They weren't, weren't able to go outside as much. They kind of felt crammed in. And sometimes they'd come into the classroom, you know, just feeling a little weighted down. And I used to use this expression constantly, and I would tell them, fear not, little flock. And so they would perk up, and they'd hear that statement. And the reminder was, is that we don't need to fear. We are his little flock. We don't need to be afraid. We are not uh, the world, per se. We are Christians. We are loved. We don't need to be afraid like the world is. We have a hope. We have an anchor. We have the assurance that our Heavenly Father is truly watching over us. And so I would make that statement in the classroom. Fear not, little flock, for it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And this is what I wanted to share with you this evening. Sometimes the students would feel overwhelmed, and I'm sure that many of you are feeling overwhelmed. Maybe you feel like you're kind of crammed in and stuck in the house. Uh, the normalcy of our lives have been kind of rocked. Uh, our children aren't at school. Uh, instead, they're doing homeschool. Uh, we're not able to have church. We're doing it online like we are now. And change is a very difficult thing. And so we're overwhelmed. And we hear the news. We turn on the news and just the constant barrage of that negative uh, virus is overwhelming. But what we need to learn to, to do and to be is to remember that we are children of our Heavenly Father and we really don't need to be in a panic. We don't need to be afraid like the world. Now, don't get me wrong. We should be um, submitting to the law of the land. Uh, it's not telling us alone to stop having church. This is affecting everyone, whether saved or unsaved. And so we need to still exercise caution. We shouldn't uh, be potentially exposing someone to a virus. But on the other hand, we don't need to be in a panic. We can rest in the Lord and know that he's faithful. He still is on the throne. This didn't take the Lord by surprise. It's taken us by surprise, but it hasn't taken the Lord by surprise at all. I find it interesting that just a few weeks before um, all of this really taking uh, the, the shape that it has, that in church we were talking about being prepared, being ready, that uh, the reality is, is that the world is going to be shaken. And so the Lord has already been reminding us of the necessity to be ready. But tonight... The Lord wants to remind us that even though we're in perilous times, the times are uncertain, that God is still on the throne and we don't need to be afraid. And so in Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 34, I'm going to read this section and then I want to bring out what the Lord placed upon my heart. In verse 22, it says, And he said unto his disciples, again, this is Luke 12, 22. Jesus spoke to his disciples and said, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for your body what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment or clothes. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouses nor barn, and God, get, God feeds them. How much more are you better than the fowls? That's the birds. And which of you taking thought can add, add to his stature one cubit? For you then be not able to do that thing which is least. Why take thought for the rest? Then he continues and says, Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed or dressed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And seek not yet what you eat or what you shall drink, but be ye, or and neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you have need of these things. 
but rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. And now, this is what we want to focus in on, verse 32. Jesus said, Fear not, fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which don't wax old, and a treasure in the heavens which fails not, where no thief approaches nor moth corrupts. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jesus is reminding his disciples, and not only his disciples, but many that followed him, that the temptation for all of us, really, for humanity in general, even we as Christians, is that we can easily get boggled down in our minds as to what we're going to wear, what we're going to eat. But the Lord is reminding us that we are very important to him. We have not escaped his eyes. God is able to provide for us, even in these uncertain times. We don't have to worry about toilet paper, to be honest with you. God will provide. Now, yes, there are times that maybe we'll hear about the store that's found in Center or in Lahera. But either way, God's going to provide. God's faithful. But we don't need to be in a panic. We can take a deep breath. We can rest in the Lord. We can truly trust him. Jesus reminds them first to look at the ravens. This is different than how it's mentioned in the book of Matthew. In the book of Matthew, it mentions, look at the birds. But here it mentions ravens. The ravens were birds of prey. They were birds that didn't just eat the seed off the ground, but ate meat. And if you think about it, that's even more difficult than just the seed on the ground. And yet the Lord provides for even the ravens. And then he gives the statement, are you much better than the fowls? You and I are his chief creation. He created you and me even above the animal kingdom. We are important to him. So then he goes on and says, um, if you worry, can you add, you know, an inch to your growth? You know, there's nothing we can do about it. You know, I was born shorter than my brothers. Hey, I'm fine with that. But even if I try to think it and make it, I can't add any height to myself. So why worry about it? And so he says, why are you worrying about those things that are least? Don't do that. So then he goes on and begins to speak about the lilies, the lilies. And he says that they grow they don't toil, they don't work, they're not spinning. And yet, he says, I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory wasn't dressed like one of these. And so he's talking about the food, he's talking about the clothing, and yet he's saying that if God takes the time to clothe and to feed the birds and to clothe the grass or the lily even better than Solomon, he says, how much more will he clothe you and me, O you of little faith? It's times like this that we need to exercise our faith. There's a story that I remember about John Wesley. John Wesley began to preach the gospel even before he was uh, truly born again. He was raised in the religion of his father, and he came to the United States to do some work among the Indians or the Native Americans. And as he was here doing this work on his way back to Europe or back uh, over the ocean home, he was on a boat. And on that boat, he saw the Germans. And the Germans uh, in the boat were the Moravians. They were believers. And this is how it says, uh, it happened. It says at seven, he says, I went to the Germans. I had long before observed the great seriousness of their behavior. And in other words, they carried themselves in a very serious way. They weren't living their lives in debauchery or living in sin or drinking and partying. They were very serious in their behavior. It says of their humility, they had given a continual proof by performing those servile offices for the other passengers, which none of the English would undertake. In other words, they took on 
the form of a servant, if you will. They ministered to others and helped others when the English didn't do so. It says, uh, for which they desired, and it means they wanted to do that and would receive no pay, saying it was good for their proud hearts and their loving Savior had done more for them. And so they wanted to work for the Lord and do what the Lord had done for them, and they wanted to show it to others. And every day they had the occasion of showing meekness, which no injury could bother them. It says if they were pushed, struck, or thrown down, they rose again and went away. But no complaint was found in their mouth. There was now an opportunity of, tr of trying whether they were uh, delivered from this uh, complaint. Uh, wait, hold on. There was now an opportunity of trying whether they were delivered from the spirit of fear as they were as from that of pride, anger, and revenge. Now, listen to this part. In the midst of the psalm wherewith their service began, and this is what happened. They began to sing there on the boat. They were on the boat. They were on their way back home. And as they were going on the boat, they began to sing. They were together in a group, these Moravians. They were worshiping the Lord together. And now their faith is going to be tried. And that in the sight of these that are watching them. And so it says there was an opportunity of trying whether they were delivered from the spirit of fear, as well as pride, anger, and revenge. And it says in the midst of the psalm, wherewith their service began, the sea broke over, split the main sail in pieces, covered the ship and poured in between the decks as if the great deep had already swallowed us up. A terrible screaming, it says, began among the English, and the Germans, these were the Moravians, calmly sung on. I asked one of them, John Wesley asked them afterwards, were you not afraid? And he answered, I thank God, no. I asked, but where did, uh, but were not your women and children afraid? He replied mildly, no, our women and children are not afraid to die. From then I went to their crying, trembling neighbors and pointed out to them the difference in the hour of trial between him that fears God and him that fears him not. At twelve the wind fell, and this was the most glorious day which I have hitherto seen. John Wesley saw in those Moravians a faith that was not shaken even when a storm had broken into that ship. They calmly sung on to the Lord in praise and in faith and in assurance that God was with them, that even if God so chose to take their lives, they had peace. They were confident in their God. John Wesley who still wasn't born again, but knew somewhat of the Lord, was in amazement at what he saw. He would eventually say that it was the most glorious day that I have ever seen. He saw faith in those Moravians, that in the midst of the storm, it didn't overwhelm them. It didn't cause them to buckle. It didn't cause them to worry and cry out like the English were. Instead, they calmly held on to the, their faith in the Lord. This is what the Lord is telling his disciples. He's telling them, look at the birds, look at the grass, and look at how God takes care of them. Aren't you of greater significance to God than they? He says, oh, you of little faith. And yet, as he continues on, he begins to show, look, it's all these for all these things that the nations of the world seek after in verse 30. The world is looking for these things, and we need to remember we are not of this world. This world is not our home. Now, yes, God will supply our every need, but it's here in verse 31 that we find a beautiful promise. It says, but rather seek the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. Our responsibility in times like these is to draw near to God like never before. It doesn't matter that the church doors are closed. The church building is not the church. You and I are the church of the living God. Look at what we're doing. We take advantage of modern technology so we can still meet together. But we don't need to be afraid. We are still the church. We can rest and be assured that God is with us. And that's when Jesus says in verse 32, Fear not, little flock, for it's the Father's good pleasure to give to you the kingdom. That 
expresses the heart of the Father to you and me. He says, don't be afraid, little flock. And what's interesting is those words, little flock, aren't found anywhere else in the New Testament. He calls believers, he calls you and me, his little flock. And what that helps to show is how helpless, first of all, we really are. We're a little flock, a little flock. We need his shepherding. We need his protection. We need his guidance. We need him to cover us, watch over us, take care of us. We need a shepherd. But we're a little flock, but we're his little flock. And so you and I don't need to be afraid. In the New Testament, that little flock is describing believers. In the Old Testament, when it described the flock, or the sheep of his pasture, it was describing God's people. You and I are believers, and we are God's people, and we don't need to be afraid. It's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's God's desire. And this, even though we hear the negative reports, even though we hear about that now the United States is surpassing even China with the amount of those that are affected by the COVID-19 virus, that's scary in the flesh. But we don't need to be afraid. We can put our trust in the Lord. We have little ones. We have our children. We have our parents. We're concerned but we don't need to be afraid. We can run to the one that is our shepherd and will protect us. And so I want to remind you this evening that God is going to be faithful to you. Fear not, little flock. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I remember sharing that with the students and uh, many times when we see them online or through Facebook, uh, they always remember that little statement. And I'm grateful to God that that's what they remember. That it's fear not, little flock, for it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I want to read you a little story, and it helps us to understand just the importance of faith. It says, there was a king who offered a prize to the artist who would paint the best picture of peace. Many artists tried. The king looked at all the pictures, but there were only two that he really liked. He had to choose between them. One picture was of a calm lake. The lake was of a perfect mirror for peaceful towering mountains well all around it. Overhead was a blue sky with fluffy white clouds. All who saw the picture thought that it was a perfect picture of peace. The other picture had mountains too, but these were rugged and bare. Above was an angry sky from which rain fell in which, in which lightning played. Down the side of the mountain tumbled a foaming waterfall. This did not look peaceful at all. But when the king looked, he saw behind the waterfall a tiny bush growing in a crack in the rock. In the bush, a mother bird had built her nest. There, in the midst of the rush of angry water, sat the mother bird on her nest in perfect peace. Which picture do you think won the prize? The king chose the second picture, because, explained the king, deeply touched, peace does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. Peace means to be in the midst of all those things and still be calm in your heart. That is the real meaning of peace. This story, in essence, even captures those Moravians singing that psalm to the Lord in the midst of a storm. You and I are Christian pilgrims. We are passing through. And we need to remain assured that God is with us. We need to show this world that we have a confidence in our hearts that God is faithful. We truly need not fear. We could, don't need to be afraid. We can trust that the Lord will watch over us. And so this evening... I do want to say this, if there's any of you that are watching that have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm here to tell you that the only way to have true peace in your heart is by coming into the sheepfold of the shepherd, by receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you receive him into your heart as your Lord and Savior, 
you ultimately become a child of God. The Bible says, to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of the living God. The world is looking for peace. We need peace. And I'm here to tell you, true peace is found in Christ alone. And so if you will open your heart's door to him, he will receive you just as you are. And he will take your life and he will give you the peace that you were looking for. And so with that, let's say a prayer. And then after that, I will say a few more statements. Lord, I pray right now for everyone that is viewing this stream, that Lord, you would truly meet them right where they are and minister your peace. I pray that you'd remind them, Lord, make those words very clear that you are telling them to fear not, little flock, that it's your good pleasure to give to them the kingdom. I pray that you'd reassure them. I pray that as they go to your feet, as they go into your presence, that you are there waiting with ears longing to hear their voice and you're longing to respond and show yourself strong on their behalf. And so minister to every heart and every life. I pray for any that are not saved. They don't know if they're saved. I pray that you would show them that all they have to do is simply call out to you with a sincere heart open their hearts to you and receive you into their lives. Turn from their wicked ways and begin to wholeheartedly follow you and put their trust in you. For it's through the cross that you make us righteous. Through your life, your death, and your resurrection, you've made us whole and complete. And so bless everyone that has watched this stream thus far. In Jesus' name, amen. I did want to share with you a website uh, that the Assemblies of God uh, has put out. Uh, it's it's full of resources, especially in light of all that's happening with this COVID-19 virus. Uh, but the, the web address is covid19.ag.org. And there you'll find devotionals, you'll find resources uh, that will bless you uh, during this time if you desire to look into it. Again, that's COVID-19, that's C-O-V-I-D-19 dot A-G dot org. Uh, and like I said, you'll find many resources uh, that will be a blessing to you. Uh, I do want to remind you, uh, uh, for those that are living in center, uh, please continue giving your tithes to Sister Marie, your offerings. If you want to give them to them personally, uh, just take them to her house. So she'll be glad to receive them. Uh, if you would like to give online on our website, centerag.org slash give, uh, you can give your tithe and your offerings there. Uh, for those in Center, uh, you can give your, or those in Antonito, I should say, and Cristo el Rey, uh, you can take your tithes and your offerings to Brother Richard Cisneros. Uh, and we're working, hopefully, on a way for you to be able to give your tithes and offerings online there in Antonito as well. And so God bless you. We pray that you've been blessed. And we pray that uh, you will continue to be blessed. Uh, my wife and I, we've been praying for you. Uh, we're believing God for his best, for his protection over you. If you all need anything, please let us know. You can contact us uh, through text, through email. Uh, you could even contact us through the website on our Contact Us page. Uh, but we're so glad that you've joined us. Uh, we pray you've been blessed. God bless you all.